is Lori here. I'm here today to do my August TBR for you guys. I love August. <laughs> August is my birthday month, so I tend to get a lot of reading done. I also tend to do a lot of shopping. I also have a staycation planned, which I'm really excited for in the city with a friend of mine, and we tend to do a lot of book shopping. But it's also a month that I tend to get a lot of reading done. Um, also, this month is the Olympics, so I tend to get a lot of reading done as I'm watching the various sport. The gymnastics is definitely my favorite. And I'll start this reading off, reading vlog off by saying that I'm going to and try to incorporate some more sports themes books into my TBR this month just because I've been watching a lot of sports things and I just want to read some more sports themes novels. So I'm going to try to incorporate those into my prompts. I did choose about eight ERCs that I'm going to focus on and I'll try to chat through them at the very, very end. Um, I also did want to say that the Time Warp YA Book Club this month will still be reading The Falconer because I forgot to read it. And also The Hidden Throne, which is the two books in that series. So that is my reading plans for the TBR and Beyond Reading Group. The link is always in the description box if you guys would like to join. Those are our group reads, but let's get into the prompts. I always deviate from my TBR, but... I'm trying to be a little bit better about that. So the first prompt that I am going to play with is a neck alley arc, which I have chosen like seven neck alley arcs. So I'm gonna go choose one and then we'll chat about it. Sometimes get changed, but the one I would love to focus on is Keeper of the Night. Here is a photo. The summary of this book, according to <laughs> The summary I'm looking up, it says, A girl of two worlds, accepted by none, half reaper, half shingami, soul collector, seeks her destiny in this haunting, compulsively readable, dark fantasy duology set in 1890s Japan. Which is actually perfect, because I've been trying to read some more Japanese-inspired books before the Tokyo-themed Olympics, so this actually works out great. I've had some really luck with some high fantasy books that have been really unique and really different, and I hope this one sort of continues on the same exact pace, but I'm really excited for this one. Um, and I will definitely add that to my jar of tricks. <laughs> uh, the next prompt, I have a big jar of prompts that I made at the start of the summer. Um, so let's, I mean, at the start, start, start of the summer. I've actually been pretty good at reading at them as well. Um, ooh, a new to me author. I'm going to go find one super excited that this book got picked because it is on my olympic theme tbr it's from tokyo with love it is from the author that wrote i love you so mochi i don't think i wound up finishing that book but i did start it um but yeah this is about rika and it's sort of like a cinderella i think she is an orphan she lives with her two cousins they're very very bossy she has to sort of work for the family business but when it starts to come to life, there's some clues that are pointing to her that her mother may not be dead and her mother is a famous Hollywood actress. She sort of needs the help of a handsome actor named Hank Chen. And I think that this book sounds adorable. Again, I'm really excited for this one. And this one seems like it would be great. And again, I've been trying to read some more books that have de dealt with Japanese heritage and Japanese characters. So I'm really, Japanese characters. So I'm really excited for this one and I'm happy that it got chosen. It was actually one of my next reads, so that's actually good. I'll save that for August. Um, and then the next prompt. I do have a lot of prompts, I'll be honest. Ooh, they all keep falling. Um, I think I just put them all away. Okay. Um, anyway, ooh, a middle grade book. I will fix that my work for this, but I do have a lot of ERX on my TBR. So my physical one will be Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. And this is about a little girl that only wants an adventure, but instead of adventure, are given a set of magical objects. Um, and there's revealed that there's a curse that's affecting their family, so the girls have to break the curse and free their family. Um, they find themselves in great danger, and in order to break the curse, they stay alive. They must unravel a mystery that goes back centuries, and one that involves shipwrecks, smugglers, and sorceries of the most perilous kind. Um, that sounds adorable. I, it's, it's been a bit since I've read some middle grade, and actually the sequel, if my notes are correct, does do come out, has come out this month, so, or will come out in August, so if I like this, I will probably pick up the sequel, but I just literally just bought this, so I'm hoping, hopeful this one will be a positive read, and it's been a bit since I've read some middle grade. I've mostly been reading high fantasy, which is very unlike me for the summer, but the next prompt is...
auto buy 2021. I will have to think of what I bought or if it's an auto buy author. I'll have to look at my shelf. Author trios that I always buy is the Lady Jamie's. So by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jade J Jody Meadows. I have read most of their books. I didn't get around to Calamity Jane yet because I bought a f <laughs> an ebook accidentally and I just never get around to reading it. This one is set in the same world as My Lady Jane and it follows Mary, Queen of Scots, who can turn into a mouse, which I think is interesting. It also follows Frances, Mary's betrothed next in line for the French throne, and Ari, the daughter of Notre Dame and a great seer. Um, and it's kind of a take on the Mary myth. Um, and I'm really excited for this one. These books are always hysterically funny and really enjoyable, and I think that this will be a great summer read. And I've had wanted to pick up her books. It's been a bit since I've read anything by this author's, and if I like this, I'll probably go back and read the My Calamity Jane which I haven't really heard anything about, but this one I've heard pretty good things about so far. Um, and then the next prompt I have, I think I'm going to choose probably like one more because I got another e-arc earlier. Ooh, ALA 2020 arc, a book I got physically got from ALA. Let me go figure out what that would be. I'm choosing Fresh by Margaret Wood. And if you don't know who Margaret Wood is, she used to be the Epic Reads girl. She used to do all those videos. And this, from what I heard, I think this, this is actually probably like a new adult book. I think it may not be, but I think that's what it comes up across. She says it's loosely inspired by Emma. I am really excited to read this. I got this in a prize pack from, I think it was ALA or one of the book conventions, and I, and it comes out in August, so I'm right on track to read it. But it's like a freshman college story, and I've never really read one of those. I struggle a little bit sometimes with new adult, but I'm really hopeful that I will like this one. It's been a bit since I've been in college, so maybe I need a refresher. But I'm really excited for this one, and will definitely give you guys my thoughts once I get around to it. Um, and then the next prompt that I'm picking is, ooh, a random number. Okay, this will be interesting. I'm gonna go fig. I'm gonna go figure out which shelf. I'm probably gonna pick like a contemporary book. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Choose a number between one and a hundred, and I'm gonna pull from my TBR card and a couple of my bookshelves. So let's see what book got you. And I wound up choosing number nine, which was definitely a short, small number than I thought. So I'm gonna choose We Are the Wildcats by Siobhan Vivian. This was the ninth book on my TBR card. Um, and this is sort of a toxic coach finds himself outplayed by a scoop of high school girls on his team with his deeply suspenseful novel, which unspools over 24 overs through six diverse perspectives. I've got this a while ago. Again, it will probably be featured in that sports reading vlog. I love Siobhan Vivian's Stay Sweet book I read a couple of years ago, and I've heard, I have actually really haven't heard anything about this book, I'll be very, very honest. But it does have to do with sports, and I've been in the mood to read some more, some, some more sports themes novels, so this will get added to the TBR queue, hopefully. Um, and then the next prompt is, ooh, an ebook, and for the ebook, I will definitely choose The Falconer, because I failed at reading that last time, and if I have it on my um, my my prompts, the book definitely gets read because I feel a little bit more pressure. There's one more prompt book because I had an e-arc that's sort of combined with my other ones, but the last prompt is audiobook, audible. Oh, okay, this is exciting because this will kind of head into the audiobooks that I'm going to tackle in the month of August. I actually haven't chosen those yet, but um, I will have to choose one. Um, let me see if I could find my iPod book. For me, not to like buy something new, but to actually like start reading the books that I have bought. I have so many on here that I just never got around to, to be honest with you. But I have heard, I think I'm going to do The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. That's an audiobook that I do really need to read the sequel. And it's been a bit since I've read that. So I think I just actually recently bought it. So it does work. So I think I'm going to put The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning as my audiobook. Because then if I'm done with that relatively quickly, I could probably read the sequel this month as well. Dive into the e -arcs that I chose. We ever we, we already did speak about Keeper of the Night, um, which is actually one of the prom my prompt books. But in addition to Keeper of the Night, I'm also going to hopefully read Dark and Shallow Lies. This one I'm really excited for. I was hoping to get it get to get to it at the end of July. It didn't happen, but here is a photo. 
thrillers, but I have a very specific type of thriller that I like, and this one really leans into that. So when I got approved for it on NetGalley, I knew I had to read it. Um, but the summary for this one is a teen girl disappears from a small town deep in the bayou where magic festers beneath the surface of the swamp like water rot in this chilling debut supernatural thriller for fans of Natasha Preston, Catherine McManus, and Rory Power. So I'm really excited for that one. That one sounds really unique and different, and I love to read them in the summer. So yeah, that one I'm really excited for, and I hope that I get around to reading it soon because it sounds awesome. We have to be on a blog tour for this one, but it's called They Met in the Tavern. Here is a photo, and I'll explain it because it sounds like another rather unique book that I haven't necessarily read before, and I'm really excited to get around to reading The summary for this book, let me see if I can locate it, is the band is getting back together, but they wish that they weren't. The Star Breakers are your classic teenage heroes. They use their combined city, and they were the most successful glitch chasers in Coruscant. But they all changed the day the city of Ra the city of Rain died. The group went their separate ways, and they were placed the bl and they were placing the blame on each other. Um, and I guess they have to unfortunately come back together. But years after falling out, a new threat looms when bounty hunters attack the former heroes. Phoenix tries to reunite the Starbreakers before everything they have left is taken from them. But a lot can change in seven years. And if mending all the wounds was easy, they would have done it a long time ago. That sounds really exciting. I, I tried to read The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth early in the pandemic and just never got around to reading it. This one sounds very, very similar, but it has more of like a supernatural and fantasy world vibe. And I really think I will enjoy it. For those that don't know, I was a big D&D &D fan back when I was younger. So anything that has like a D&D &D vibe, I will definitely pick up. I'm really excited for this one. And it sounds great. So, um, and the next book on my e-list, my e-book list that I wrote up is, um, we talked about those, is Tips for Magicians. I think this is another middle grade arc, but let's find out what the summary is. Sounds really great. I got approved for a lot because I did went I went to ALA this summer, virtually of course. But this summary is after a magic muse seems to have abandoned a small Utah town, it is a it, it is up to a grieving boy, his best friends, and a stray dog to find out where it has gone and how to bring it back to this lyrical and hopeful story. I feel like this book might make me cry. I have a thing about dogs. As long as the dog is okay, I'll be okay. But I really am excited to dive into this one. And then I think one of the last e -barks I put on this list, sorry, my Funkos keep falling, ooh, is Whispering Alaska. I actually have two more, and I think this is another middle grade book, but let's dive into it. I got a lot of these from Penguin, I think, um, because they had a big e -arc selection at ALA. Um, I think it's Penguin. Um, but this book is an echo focused middle grade novel follows the readers follows the story of twin sisters who move with their father to a small town in alaska after a fresh start after their mother died and i think this might have to do with climate change but it also does deal what a lot of grief and i think that sounds like really interesting so i'm really excited for that one that one sounds cute and the last one i have is probably the most exciting one i got accepted for i got accepted for a lot of cool ones um, but that is Little Thieves. So here's a photo. There that wrote um, the the Merciful Crow series, which I have not actually read yet. But this one sounds really diff really exciting. I always say different, and no one ever says they're different. But I just am enjoying it. A scrappy maid must outsmart both palace nobles and low gods in a new YI fantasy by the author of the Merciful Crow series. Once upon a time, there was a horrible girl. Um, Vanna knows that no gift is freely given, not even a mother's love, and she's on the hook for one hell of a death. Um, she's the adopted goddaughter of Daughter and Fortune. Um, yeah, I think it, it's it, it's an irrelevant retelling of the goose girl about stolen lives, thorny truths, and the wicked girls at the hearts of both. Again, I'm really intrigued for that one. I've heard a lot about this Goose Girl. I read, I think I read a Goose Girl retelling earlier this year, maybe. 
but or early like in the past couple of years but that one sounds awesome again really exciting i've been really craving some high fantasy books recently i don't know if it's because like i feel so trapped like we can't really do anything exciting maybe that's why i'm feeling like some fantasy worlds i don't know but i'm really that one sounds really exciting so i'm like hopefully i'll get around to reading that one soon now we're just going to talk about a couple of the physical books. I always have more physical books on my TBR than necessary. I doubt I'll get into these, but these were mostly carryovers from the previous month. Top shelf of a TBR card. So these are all the books that are just sort of sitting there. I know I probably won't read them all, but I tend to read a lot in August. So the first is The Curse of the Spectre Queen by Jenny Elder Moog. And this I think is like a god but it also has to do with like relics and archaeology I actually had an e-arc of this like a while ago but I bought this just to sort of pick it up and have a physical copy because reading on my kindle sometimes hurts my eyes a lot and I really wanted to get around to this one so this one is high on my tbr I also just got my copy of sisters of snake from owl crate so this will definitely be on that as well um I haven't really heard a lot about this book but I know that it has to do with two girls that don't that are not like related but they look a lot alike so it reminds me a little bit of mirage and it's written by actual sisters which i think is kind of cool love boat taipei was supposed to be in that um readathon blog but i i learned it's not doesn't take place in chance it takes place in taipei china obviously laura duh but i've heard really good things about this one so i do want to get around to it and i haven't really read like just like a gossip girl inspired really like a fluffy contemporary yet so this might take it. Also, Kate in Waiting by Becky Abertelli. I also have from the library. This might get read. It has some theater roots, and I miss theater a lot. Also, Defending Taylor by Miranda Kennelly is going to be in that sports reading vlog that I'm making. Um, and this is, like, out of order. I think this is book, like, four in that series, but I just need something a little bit more sportsy. Um, this one was one that I bought a couple of months ago, and that's The Kindred Spirit Supper Club by Amy E. Wright Card. This is a cozy mystery that has to do with spirits. Um, another Owl Crate book on this list is The Ones We Are Meant to Find by June He. And this is more of like a science fiction story focused on sisters. Rebel Rose by Emma Tharlett is a Belle inspired retelling set after her happily after in 1789 and in France. I've heard okay things about this story, but Belle is definitely my favorite princess. Um, ooh, and then it also a little bit of a darker story is The Survivalist. You follow a woman named Sloane, and she's devastated by her sister's Tally's death. But when she finds a list that is a land of places and names along with her phone number, Sloane is ready to learn the truth about the secrets her family has been hiding for years. So this is definitely a harder read, but I think it's a perfect summer read as well. XOXO by Axie O is another K-pop theme novel. Jenny is a celloist. Um, I think her grandma gets really sick, and after she has a night with a boy, she winds up going to the same school as him, and surprise, he's a K-pop star. I've heard okay things about this one, but I picked it up because I wanted to, and I also have two Star Wars-themed books that I got from my library. So one is Star Wars Moving Target, a Princess Leia adventure, and one is Star Wars The Smuggler's Run, a Han Solo and Chewbacca um, story. These are, in, these are in that line in the lead up to reading Star Wars Force Awakens just to expand out the world. So I got these. These are middle grade. Probably won't take me that long to read. But yeah, let's talk about the audiobooks that I hope to read this month, hopefully. This audiobook I talked about in the earlier clip was The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. I do have the sequel to that series as well. So that is one that I would love to get uh, around to. Sorry, I'm just writing that down so I don't forget. Um, and then the next one, I'm going to attach a photo. It's by Valerie Bowman, and it's the second book in the Footman series. I read, I think I read it in July. Maybe I read it in June, but here's a photo. Book in that series, I really loved the first book, like, a lot. I thought it was so fun and so cute, and I just love all the guys in that series. So this one, I think, is like a second chance romance, which I'm really excited for. Um, and then I don't really know what I'm going to do with my nonfiction reads this month. I may buy a couple of more gymnastics themes, um, autobiographies. I've never read the Dominique Mucciano one. I've also 
might want to reread the Sean Johnson one. Um, but the one that I did pick up, which has nothing to do with gymnastics, is, I don't know the name of it. I'll put a picture up. Um, but it's the new one by Michael Wolf. Again, it's more of like a political themed one. I think it's called, uh, what's it called? I think it's called uh, Landslide. I'll put a picture up of it. For my own knowledge, I think it's interesting and I like to stay apprised of the world. Um, but I also might try to read, I did recently pick up some like adult fantasy books to read on the side. So what I think I might try to pick up is, I'm just looking because I have a couple of them. I think I'm going to pick up Kill the Farm Boy because I do have an audiobook of that one. Um, so I think I'm going to add that one to my TBR queue. It's called Kill the Farm Boy. I'll put up a picture. But I kept starting and stopping, and that is When Justin Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. Again, the thing with this month is that I am listening to a lot of gymnastic podcasts, so I may just run out of time, to be honest with you, to, like, read all these, but they are my plans. So that is my whole TBR for the month of August. Thank you guys for sticking with me and watching. Let me know in the comments what are some highly anticipated books that you want to read this month. And I'll talk to you guys soon for my next video.